Hello, hello, Sarah of SEK Handmade here, and today I'm going to share with you how to work a forked cluster. Let's go. You guys, I am really loving the texture that a forked cluster gives for a couple reasons. One, it's a super simple stitch that once you get into the groove of it, you will fly with, but also it gives wonderful texture and it's reversible. The front and the back look the same, making it a great stitch for items that you're going to see the front and the back of. So like a scarf, if you really want to go crazy with this, you could just make the correct number of chains and make a big long scarf and oh, it would be so squishy and so cozy and so meditative. <laughs> Let's learn how to make this stitch. When you're starting out with the forked cluster, it is a multiple of one plus four if you're just starting out by working into your chain. But I find when you're doing stitches like this, it's actually a lot easier to work into a row of stitches than back into your chain, especially if you're uh, the type of person, which is incredibly common, who tends to chain a little tightly. So if you want to try this stitch by working back into chains, you're going to need a multiple of one, so any number really, <laughs> plus four. I'm going to go ahead and work mine into a row of single crochet stitches. So my numbers are going to be just slightly different. Stay with me here. You can do this. So I'm going to choose the number of forked clusters I want to do. Let's say five. And so I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I need one additional stitch to work the forked clusters. So I'm going to chain six. And then I need an additional chain for my turning chain for my single crochet. So I'm going to chain one more, seven. Then I'm going to skip my first chain and work my single crochets into the second chain from my hook and all the way across. And I should end up with six single crochets. All right, let's give them a count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yay. <laughs> it worked out. All right. So then to work our first forked cluster, we're going to start by chaining three. One, two, three. I like to chain before I turn my work. You can chain after you turn your work. Total personal preference, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to chain three. Then we are going to yarn over, insert our hook into that very first stitch and pull up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over again, insert our hook into that second stitch and we have one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over, we're going to pull through just three of those loops, which leaves us with three loops left on our hook. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through those final three loops. And there is your first forked cluster. You're just going to continue doing that, inserting into the stitch you already worked in. So the last stitch you worked in, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through three loops, yarn over, pull through three loops. And there's our second forked cluster. And we're going to keep going. I said I was going to have five of them, so I have three more to do. Yarn over, insert into the previously worked in stitch, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through three, and there's one, two, three. So I have two more to go. And there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can see that my turning chains here are a little funky. I tend to be a person who prefers one less turning chain than what's recommended. And if that is you as well, you could chain just two and see if that evens up your edge a little more. But we're not quite finished with this row just yet. We're going to put one more stitch in here and that is simply a double crochet in our final stitch, which we have already worked 
one of our, so our final forked cluster in two. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You know how to do a double crochet. And that is our first row. Now we're going to work a second row to get us back to the other side. So since I said I prefer fewer turning chains, let's go ahead and try our next row of forked clusters with just two turning chains. And let me show you the difference that that makes in my edge. So just like before, I'm going to chain two this time though instead of three turn my work yarn over insert my hook pull up a loop yarn over insert into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through three yarn over pull through three and i'm going to do a couple more so that we can compare all right so let's compare these you can see that this is my edge that i chained two and there's a real nice straight edge there. And this is my uh, spot where I chained three. And you can see that it bows out and there's a little gap. The number of chains you do, unpopular opinion here, is a bit personal preference. So as long as your project doesn't have you using those chains for something specific, so you know, kind of read ahead a little bit, it, uh, you can change up how many chains you do to get a nicer straight edge. You guys, I am continually amazed by the gorgeous textures that can be achieved by crochet stitches, and the forked cluster is just gorgeous. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any other tutorials like this video and maybe even share it with a friend. I would be so, so grateful. Thank you for joining me today, and happy crafting!